are we in June already? It feels like it was only just the start of the year when all of this happened and now we are coming up to halfway through the year. I guess it was the start of the year when all of this happened. We were in, what, March when everything started to go quite get quite ramped up here in the UK. So yeah, we'd only really, we were only really two months into the year. And now I'm like, wow, we're in June. I can't quite compute how we've, how much time has passed so quickly. The mind boggles. I'm just like, wow, June. As you can see, I am on Depop duty today. Thank you to everyone that made a purchase last night. Everything sold within eight minutes. I cannot believe how quick off the mark some of you are with these Depop uploads. I think I put on Instagram in the morning that I was going to go live at 8 p.m. Started putting stuff up at one minute past eight and then by eight minutes past, it was all gone. So thank you to everyone. However, I do need to issue an apology. Be right back. I need to apologise to anyone that will be receiving their order in these. I made a grave miscalculation when trying to order mailing bags. I just wanted some mailing bags that would fit shoeboxes in because the mailing bags that I usually use don't quite fit a shoebox in and have somehow ended up with these. They are almost like a bin bag. Look how big they are. So yeah, I apologise if your item comes triple wrapped in this ginormous bag but I ordered a hundred of them <laughs> and, I, I'm, and I'm not going to waste them. Um, oh dear, it's Monday. Good morning all, it's Wednesday. I started vlogging on Monday which you will have probably seen a very small clip of me doing some Depop stuff Monday morning and then I stopped. I told myself I wasn't going to vlog this week because of several reasons but the main reason being that there is a lot going on at the moment as I'm sure all of you are aware there is a lot going on in terms of Black Lives Matter and anti-racism and yeah there's just a lot going on surrounding all of that and I was like do you know what, I think I'm just going to leave vlogging this week so that I can have a week of just consuming it all, just immersing myself in it and uh, saving resources, you know, reading, researching, learning, just, you know, starting the anti-racism work basically. And I've decided to start vlogging again because ironically, I have found it very difficult to kind of process what I'm seeing online and I'm actually finding it draining. Now not, I don't mean draining in the sense that it's draining having to read all this and it's draining having to learn and unlearn these things, not at all. What I mean by draining is, is that the brain, well my brain certainly does not learn in this fast-paced intense way of seeing, you know, I, I cannot compute all of this information that I'm seeing online at the moment. I just can't. It's, it's so fast paced that my brain is kind of, it's trying to read what it's seeing, but it's just, it, it can't fully take it all in. So maybe what I'm trying to say is that my brain is a little bit drained and a little bit exhausted because it, I'm not really giving it time to properly digest what I'm seeing online, properly read things, properly listen to things because everything is so fast paced online at the moment and I just want to I guess not remove myself completely from online because that is where I'm finding most of the resources but I just want to collate a few resources, step away from online so I can read those resources or listen to them or whatever it is that I've saved and then go back online but like this morning, so it's half 11, I woke up and went straight on my phone at eight o'clock and have not stopped. That's three and a half hours I've sat on my phone, just looking. I haven't really been taking anything in. I've just been just constantly looking, scrolling, swiping through. And my head actually hurts. And I, and I just think that's because 
this is not normal for the, the mind, you know, the brain to process information this way. And something that is, um, I find a bit problematic about the internet and especially Instagram is that it is so fast paced and people on the internet expect things to happen as quickly as the internet goes does that make sense like the internet is so fast paced that people think that things need to be everything else needs to be going at that pace when actually that is so far from the reality of things and this isn't going to be a change that happens overnight or in the space of a week or a month this is years and years and years of learning that we all need to do we need to go back and learn the history we need to then well, yeah, we need to start from the very beginning and just educate ourselves all the way through that. It's, it's a long process. It's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's difficult to sit on that app and actually learn from it, I find, because I, I'd say 70% of what I'm seeing on there is like, uh, what was the term I saw earlier? Aesthetic activism. I think that was the term that I saw. And I thought that was a great way of putting it, aesthetic insta um, activism, because it is just a lot of nice quotes that have been put together in pretty fonts, um, and then that's it, there's not much else. So I thought I'd start vlogging again, and I don't want this to feel like I'm doing it in terms of um, trying to escape from anything, because a lot of people have said that they find my vlogs very calming and they're a nice way to kind of get away from noise. I mean, lots of people have said it's been really nice to sit down and watch my vlog to just kind of distract themselves from what's been happening in terms of coronavirus around the world. And that's lovely. That's extremely heartwarming. And I, and I feel privileged that people can come to this content and feel like they can switch off from things. But I do feel like this isn't an issue that we should switch off from, which is also why I was like, I'm not vlogging this week because I don't want to be escapism for anyone to escape from what we're seeing online because it shouldn't be escaped from. But then life is still going on, you know, I'm still pottering around the house, I'm still doing, tr well, trying to do things. Um, so I'm not really sure how, how this vlog's going to take shape this week, but I was thinking I'd, I do still want to do it because although this might be slightly different to the usual vlogs that you see, it would be interesting maybe for other people to see my process of all of this. Um, I don't want that to be me centering myself within all this at all. I think it would be interesting as a white person to document the um, how uncomfortable this is and the guilt of all of this. And because it's very important as white people for us to acknowledge our guilt and acknowledge how uncomfortable it feels to realize that there is essentially racism deep rooted within you that you didn't know about so in that sense i, I like does that make sense I don't, i'm not centering around myself to say hi i'm struggling i just want to show people that we need to sit with the the discomfort we need to sit with the guilt we need to sit with these feelings and work out how to um, move forward with them and how to, you know, educate ourselves. Um, so yes, that that is where I'm at. Right, okay. What do I even say? Firstly, I take my glasses off to put my concealer on. I wanna say it's been a funny week, but to say it's been a funny week I feel undermines the importance and the impact that this week has had. Um, as you can see, I have not continued to vlog this week and that is purely because I have been glued to my phone. I have not been able to tear myself away from my screen, I have just been devouring everything. I've seen online. Yesterday was actually the first day of my period so the emotions that come with that um, just was the icing on the cake yesterday so I had a 
day where I was just horizontal on the sofa, just on my computer, on my phone, just being a complete slob, eating loads of food and not really doing a lot else. Well, I was online, but in terms of actually being active, you know, I didn't, I didn't move. So yes, and I'm ashamed to admit that my screen time yesterday was a grand total of 10 hours and 35 minutes, which I don't even know how, like, when did I find the time to do anything else yesterday? When did I go to the toilet? When did I make myself lunch? When did I, like, I, I'm quite shocked by that. So today I'm having a bit of a time out from my phone and I'm not picking it up unless it's absolutely necessary. I've got plenty of other things to keep me occupied today. I do not need to engross myself with what I'm seeing on Instagram. I've got plenty of things to read, plenty of things to listen to, lots of resources all stored that I can just work through today. I do not need to get completely consumed by Instagram for another day. It's just not healthy. I don't want to turn this into a huge anti-racism rant or talk or anything like that um, but it has been a real eye-opener for me in terms of the things that I've been doing wrong within my industry. Um, I know that this is this subject is applicable across every single sector within our life but I want to address it to my audience in a way that is applicable I guess does that make sense what I mean by that is that I will do I am prepared to do the anti-racism work and I'm prepared to do the research across all sectors of my life but when I am broadcasting it and talking about it I want it to be applicable to what my channels and social media outlets are about so what I mean by that is most of my audience, especially on Instagram, follow me because of my style. And I, you know, that is predominantly what my Instagram is. It is about what I'm wearing. So that means that I need to, I'm going to try and keep doing my makeup while I talk at the same time. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. So that means I need to kind of target the way I speak about anti-racism within the influencer industry, the fashion industry, and it needs to be focused on, it doesn't need to be, but I would like to focus how I talk about it online um, within reform in the fashion industry and the influencer industry, basically. So that is going to be holding brands accountable, questioning brands, that's going to be making space, giving up space for black content creators uh, you know, black influencers, it's going to be giving up paychecks so that black influencers and black content creators get the opportunities that they might not possibly get because they are being taken up by white influencers. There's going to be a lot of um, questioning brands and just really, really looking at the problems within fashion and influencers and this whole sector and how there is racism within it. I feel bad saying that I just don't have the words, but I mean, that because that in itself is problematic. I should be speaking out regardless of whether I know what words I want to say or not. Yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been an incredibly, uh, it's been an incredible week. Let's just leave it at that. That's that. It's been an incredible week. It's been an uncomfortable week. It's been an important week as well. And I hope that this is the catalyst for change within a lot of people. This, um, well, not this week, but you know, going forward, forevermore. Um. So yeah, there, there's there's been zero vlogging and I'm not sure if this is even going to be a vlog this week it might be two weeks rolled into one so we shall see but I do have things to te uh, tell you I've I mean this is the first time I put makeup on this week I haven't left the house since Monday so um yeah this is sort of like the first time I'm really kind of doing stuff um we are supposed to be having some decking put down in our garden today 
but it's pretty grey and we've just had a torrential downpour so not quite sure if we're going to get this decking done the goal was to have it done by the end of this week so the end of sunday but yeah not sure how that's going to happen uh so that that's a garden update and what else have i got oh i've actually got a few um like little online discoveries that i can show you so i'll, I'll just show you on my computer now a shame to admit that i've only just discovered the killing eve playlist on spotify I've been watching Killing Eve from the very beginning when it first came out. Huge fan, love the show, always loved the music, never ever thought to actually search for a playlist. Um, so here we are, three seasons later, and I'm only just listening to the playlist, and I'm hooked, absolutely love it. Something I would like to point out is I've started doing um, a monthly playlist. Well, I say start, well, yeah, literally started only in May, and I've just started June's one. The reason I've decided to do this is to not only collate any music that I've used in the vlogs that month, but also to just add any songs that I've really enjoyed that month. Because a few people asked if I could maybe do some playlists or put together playlists for the vlogs. And I thought that was quite a good idea. So this one's fairly small, there's only 12 songs. Um, June will probably be a little bit bigger because I only started this sort of like midway through May but it'd be quite nice to see how the moods change each month and it'll be sort of a nice like little self-reflection tool to look back on how like what music I was listening to each month so the playlists will be linked at the bottom in the description box on the vlogs you know depending on which month we're in and you can also search me on Spotify I believe if you just search Brittany Bathgate I'm not private or anything, so you can you can stalk all of my Spotify activity if you like and follow the playlists if you wish to do so. Um, now, what else? what else did I have to show you? Oh yes, yeah, some podcasts. So on my hunt for independent wine sellers, um, you know, like natural organic wine stockists, I found a very nice shop in LA, um, which is of obviously no use to me because I can't shop um, for wine from a small tiny shop in LA but through discovering the shop I found this podcast called Wine Face and if you are kind of getting into wine it's a really good one and she does um, her name is Helen I believe and she owns a shop called Helen's Wines in LA on Fairfax that means nothing to me but um, if you are in LA <laughs> It might mean something to you. Anyway, she has done an entire episode on orange wine. So if that's um, if that's your bag, then definitely go listen. That's the Nova Reed one that I spoke about last week. This one I haven't listened to yet because um, I'm going to do that when I'm running. But someone recommended this as a really nice uh, meditative thing to listen to while you're walking, running, exercising. This I've just discovered um, is awesome. Um, the Girls Talk podcast from Adawa and these are two podcasts I'm going to start listening to. This one is more about the kind of history of colonialism and slavery, just, you know, re the real sort of like back to where it all started, a proper history lesson. And then this podcast is from Rennie Edo Lodge who is the author of Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. So um, lots to listen to and I just thought I'd share those things in case anyone else is um, looking for some new things to listen to. I have just topped up on my favourite uh, body moisturiser. I've actually got two tubs this time because I get through this so quickly and that is just a reflection of how much I moisturise my body. I do it every morning and every evening. I think I'm now on my, this is my fourth tub of the year. I, just because I'm spending so much time in the, out in the garden, skin does feel a little bit more dehydrated, hence why I'm doing this twice a day at the moment. This stuff is awesome. It's from Beauty Pie and it is literally like, oh, like look at that. I mean, it looks edible. Yeah, it, just incredible body cream that I highly recommend. And it's probably one of the few things I recommend from Beauty Pie. I mean, I've tried quite a few things and I can't say I've been wowed by everything, but this is definitely um, a winner along with, I think I spoke about this maybe 
briefly in last week's vlog, this SPF is also a very, very good one. So the decking is going really well. Dean and his dad are currently camped out in his studio at the end of the garden because it's throwing it down and they can't do anything until the rain stops. Oh, I feel so sorry for them because they cleared this day so that they could get it done. I've thrown myself together a salad for today's lunch. I've got halloumi, falafel, some rocket and other leaves, some cucumber, some beetroot, and then controversially have decided to add a little splodge of a burger sauce on the side. <laughs> from last week and that was where do you keep your fridge and I thought that that's such a good question because every time I show my kitchen you can't see a fridge there is not a fr there's no built-in fridge there's no fridge out on show it's just not even part of our kitchen and that is because we keep it hidden under our stairs and I will show you so this is the staircase that Dean built and then it was designed so that we have these doors underneath to create understairs storage. So as you can imagine, the things under here are all the things that you just don't want people to see, like the hoover, the shopping bags, mop and bucket, just all of that stuff you do not want anyone to see. And then in this end cupboard, we have the fridge. I really, really dislike fridges. We didn't have the budget to have some luxurious looking fridge that could be out on display. So I suggested let's put the fridge in under the stairs and it's worked really well. Um, actually this would be quite funny to show you because people will often ask me where do I keep all of our sentimental things or do we even have sentimental things and my answer is, is that most of it is on the front of our fridge. This would be quite funny actually to show you what's on here. Um, that's a picture of Dean when his nephew was born. Um, there's, there will be quite a lot of Australia related stuff on here um, magnet from Australia Zoo. There's quite a few pictures of Dean and I with um, koalas, just because every time we go, that's the first time we ever went to Australia. Wow, we look so, so young. Every time we go, we go to the wildlife sanctuary in Corumban and get um, a little picture taken with a koala. This is quite funny. This is from a photo booth. Um, this is also from the first, sorry, that plaster on my thumb is gross. This is from a photo booth in Surfer's Paradise. This is the first time I think we ever went to Surfer's Paradise. This was back in 2013. And probably the last time we, we've been to Surfer's Paradise. But it was like a Japanese uh, photo booth that quite clearly smooths your skin and reshapes your face. What else is there? Uh, 
loads of magnets from places we've traveled to this dean went to the philippines last summer because he had a solo exhibition there um our friend livery and joe's saved the date card for their wedding which was last summer i just I, I like keeping stuff like that what else is there oh this is this is me and my sister from when we went to visit her the this was the first this was when she just moved out there and we went to see her a couple of years ago uh, so I was like, right, we're taking you to the wildlife sanctuary, we're getting a photo with a koala. I got this when I went to um, LA a couple of years ago. Obviously, pizza takeaway menu, essential. Um, what else is there? Oh, this is quite good. This, um, when we went to Singapore and I had my first bubble pancake. Is that what you call it, a bubble pancake? And I just loved the packaging that it came in. Good good magnet from a Stanley Kubrick exhibition. Some thank you cards from both Dean's um, nephew and niece. Oh, Blue Mountains magnet. Oh, I feel a bit, I feel ever so sentimental and a little bit, a little bit teary looking at some of this stuff. I've actually got a whole tote bag upstairs that's just full of things that I've kept from trips and just really sentimental things. I might actually dig it out and put some more on the fridge because I feel like there's a lot more space to be filled here. It is forecast to rain all day today. So decking plans are not going ahead. However, I have not left the house since Monday and quite frankly, I am starting to get slight cabin fever and feel very lethargic in my body. So I've got a few errands to do today. I need to go to the post office and I'm going to go to the bakery to get some bread. So I have put on my trusty, um, gosh, where's this from? Why can I not remember where this is from? Rains. No, Stutterheim. Stutterheim. That's the one. Rains do the slightly thinner ones. This is my Stutterheim rain jacket that always comes out when I'm just like, Ugh, you know, like just want to be comfy, cannot be bothered to get dressed today, but need to wear something waterproof. This is the jacket that I normally wear. It's either this or I'll wear a barber, but um, my barber is hidden up in the loft, I believe. So come for this and my Converse. These are the 70s, so they've got a slightly chunkier sole and a goldy jeans. Oh, and glasses at Oliver Peoples. I get asked this pretty much every week but they were a limited edition style a couple of years ago so I don't think you can get this exact colourway. The colourway is just clear with gold in the uh, arms but um, the style is called O'Malley if you are interested in this shape. But yeah today is just going to be me doing errands and then I'm going to come home make myself a cheese and tomato toasty and sit and read. Actually, I think I might have, because Dean said he's going to go in his studio and do some painting, I might have a little Studio Ghibli movie marathon session because I think they're still all on Netflix and they're such good films to just um, put on during the day and when you just want to relax on the sofa. Just when I thought the week couldn't get any slower, we have had a weekend of torrential rain and things have slowed down even more so than they already were. However, my brain feels like it's been traveling at about a thousand miles per hour this week. Like just trying to take in everything that I want to take in, read things, listen to things, watch things. It's been um, a real sort of test for the mind and I don't think this is the correct way to be learning by trying to like absorb all of this information all in one go. So because my brain has just been kind of in overdrive in terms of physical productivity, I've not really done anything, um, which doesn't make for very interesting viewing. This weekend, I had a bit of a Studio Ghibli marathon. I watched My Neighbor Totoro, Castle in the Sky and the other one I watched. How's Moving Castle? That's it. I made myself a cheese and tomato toasty because that's my favourite snack still. Had a fantastic strawberry and custard pastry. Sat and ate that. 
cleaned the toilet, cleaned the rather messy cupboard underneath the kitchen sink, went out in the rain in my pyjamas and cut off all the dead flowers on my plants. Oh, watched a film called Summer of 84, which was all right. It was um, kind of a bit sort of Goonies meets Stranger Things kind of vibe. So, yes, you can kind of tell the sort of weekend it's been. It's been a very up and down week. It's been a week of learning. I feel like the mindset I was in on Monday is completely different to the mindset I'm in now. And what I thought was right on Monday, I now think is wrong now I'm at Sunday. It's been a real up and down and it will continue to be so I think for years and years to come. I think the whole point of this is that we learn and we unlearn things essentially but we also trip up, we make mistakes, we get things wrong, we think things that are right are wrong and that are wrong are right. Like the whole point of this is for it to be uncomfortable and for it to be a very long journey of learning and unlearning anti-racism and what I've experienced this week I am sure will continue ex to experience for years and years and years now it's um it's been a real catalyst for change for me within my work within my thinking uh, within every aspect of life really and without centering without continuing to centering the conversation around me as a white woman and around my white followers, I do want to encourage anyone who wants to create a discussion within the comments section to do so, whether it's about something I've said in this video or something you have seen online or just anything in terms of what we're seeing online at the moment. I think I would like people to feel comfortable to address anything they feel they want to address within the comment section but I would like to encourage people to do it with kindness and with unity in mind and not in a nasty way. I've seen a lot of really productive and helpful conversations online but I've also seen some really really nasty conversations online that aren't productive and that just kind of lose sight of the point and when we're viewing content online I would like people to remove themselves from this idea that if you're not posting on social media it means you're not doing anything because I think that in itself is problematic and because people think that way that's why we're seeing so much performative posts and performative claims of allyship online it's it's wrong it's wrong to judge just by what you're seeing especially on Instagram because Instagram is an echo chamber at the moment and we are seeing the same thing being repeated over and over and over when actually I think we need to tackle what's outside on Instagram. All I need to do is go onto Facebook and I can see it is rife with racism and it is terrifying. But then you go on Instagram and you don't see that and that's why I feel Instagram is a bit of an echo chamber at the moment because we are not focusing our attention on what is outside of Instagram because there's some hideous things on other social platforms. You know, Twitter is a whole beast. There is some hideous things on there. But the way Instagram works is that you surround yourself with other people who have the same views as you. So all you're seeing is a lot of positive change and you think, oh yeah, this is great. The same thing happened with uh, Brexit. You know, we I never thought Brexit was going to go ahead because when I went on Instagram, there was not a single person saying that they would vote for Brexit, but that is the way we surround ourselves with people who have the same beliefs as us. And that's the way algorithms work as well. So you just need to be careful that when you're on Instagram, that it isn't just an echo chamber and you're not just preaching to the choir. We need to remember that there is so much outside of Instagram. So if there are people who aren't posting as much as other people, or there are people who are posting in a different way or approaching this in a different way, or, you know, only posting maybe once every other day. Don't be so quick to judge that just by not putting something on that one singular platform means that they're not doing anything because I just, I think that's really wrong. And going back, to, I feel like I'm going full circle now, but going back to that, I think that pressure is what's making people just post blindly onto Instagram without properly thinking about things. I'm not sure if I'm gonna sign the vlog off here or not. I mean, it's, it's now Sunday. Um, I will edit this together, see how long it is, and then possibly post it 
as I did with last week's vlog, this week I will put any things down below that I think are really, really helpful to anyone who is maybe struggling to navigate this or just needs a little bit more clarity on things. I've watched some incredible videos this week that have just, the kind of videos where you're just like, I need a pen and paper, I need to write this down because it just, some very, very awakening, profound things that have just kind of really hit me and been like, oh wow, yeah. So I'll leave those bits down below and we'll be back shortly, I presume, to either sign this off or continue the week. Hello from present day me, it's Wednesday and it's the day that this vlog will go live. I had initially planned on combining last week into this week's vlog to create one large vlog that would go live on Sunday. So essentially just two weeks worth of footage into one video. However, I've just been putting it all together and realized that if I did that, I was probably going to end up with a vlog that was over an hour long. And while a lot of you are sat at home with slightly more time on your hands, I don't think anyone has the brain capacity to sit and watch me for over an hour. So this will go up today and then there will be another vlog live on Sunday, which will be the full documentation of this week. So um, yes, there, that's that. I This vlog has been extremely conversational. There has been a lot of me talking directly to you at the camera for long periods of time, but I think we can, well, I hope we can all agree that it's needed. This week has been all about conversations. It has been about listening as well, but I think it was very important to have those conversations that I was having in my head and have, have them out loud on camera, um, have them with my friends, have them with my colleagues, have them with Dean. So yeah, and it's it's been interesting to watch how my mindset has changed. Like I repeated myself a lot, I feel, but it's quite funny to see when I first started talking at the beginning of last week, how I was feeling drained and I was annoyed at the amount of information there was out there and how I couldn't take it all in. And I realized I was actually in the completely wrong mindset that day and was thinking, I wasn't thinking logically, I was thinking too much in the moment and I was worrying too much about kind of making an impact that week, not fully realizing or accepting that this is lifelong work and this is something that needs to be an ongoing process of learning for essentially the rest of my life. But in that week, last week, because of how intense everything felt, I just felt like I had to consume and read and watch and listen to so much stuff. And that just became really, it became too much for me. And I think you can see that um, it just, it, it really overwhelmed me and like physically hurt my head quite a bit. So yeah, I'm kind of really accepted this week that it's 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 a long process basically. That that's the long and short of it is that it's not something that we can fix in a week and it goes way beyond what we are seeing on social media and it goes way beyond black squares and um meaning, you know, like nice pretty memes and quotes. It goes way beyond that. So, yes, that's um, I just wanted to say that because I, even when I was in the last clip that you just saw, I think even then I was still, you could st still tell that my brain was quite like overloaded and I still wasn't quite sure how to process things. But feeling um, like I've got much more clarity this week. Anyway, I've been rambling for 3 minutes and 23 seconds and I just feel like I'm making this longer and longer and more painful for you to watch. So I thank you for watching and again, um, as I said, encourage any conversation of any sorts within the comments below. So long as we can do it in a sort of like a, a friendly and constructive and productive way, I'm more than happy to talk about anything addressed in this video, anything that you've seen online that you'd like to address. Just it's, you know, the comment section is open. And as always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next vlog.